Welcome to Face Forward, the podcast, the series that takes you behind the scenes of the riveting world of clinical trial management. I am your host, Valerie Coveney, and I am thrilled to be your guide on this journey through the nuances of planning, executing, and navigating the clinical research landscape. With us today is a global thought leader in dermatology drug development with experience in clinical trials and reg approvals. She published numerous scientific articles and is skilled in various areas, including dermatology, immunology, and aesthetic medicine. Join us as we dive into gene therapy. We will be exploring three crucial points in our discussion. Gene therapy's impact on dermatology, stem cell therapy and its potential impact on dermatology treatment, and finally, key challenges to consider in stem cell therapy. Let's extend our warmest welcome to Novarum's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Yasmina Yankicevic. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. It is a pleasure to be part of a podcast that actually brings value to listeners. Okay, so let's dive right in, shall we? So do you think that gene therapy is going to take over the clinical development space in dermatology? Gene therapy in dermatology has been initially intended to correct the genetic diseases. The greatest strides uh, have been made in the hereditary dystrophic epidermolysis bullosa, where we have the first approved gene therapy for dominant and recessive forms. Other candidates uh, uh, in terms of genodermatosis that conceptually could be managed by gene therapy are diseases like epidermolysis bullosa simplex, junctional epidermolysis bullosa, pachyonychia congenita, Netherton syndrome, xenoderma pigmentosum, lamellar ichthyosis, X-linked ichthyosis, Harlequin ichthyosis, and even Bulo's congenital ichthyosiform erythroderma. So lovely names to practice <laughs> um, when you have nothing better to do, right? Um, essentially, with either ex vivo or in vivo or gene editing approaches, we have huge field to yet test and prove uh, both safe and effective, but equally, if not more important, commercially sustainable. This is really... Uh, in dermatology still quite uncharted territory. Uh, of course, the investigations of gene therapy are not limited to genodermatosis only. They're also implicated in wound healing, uh, cancer treatments uh, such as for melanoma and uh, squamous cell carcinoma, for immunomodulation, and potentially in skin aging as part of a regenerative medicine movement. Uh, for example, in wound healing, a gene transfer is easier because there is no epidermal barrier, the size of the treatment area is limited, and therapy is required for the limited time, right, until the wound actually heals. Uh, investigation in refractory burn wound, diabetic ulcer, vascular ulcer, and the cubital ulcer could be uh, very promising aspects uh, for rapid healing. Um, and in addition, the hope is that the newly formed skin would have less tendency to heal irregularly and potentially scar, especially with development of uh, hypertrophic and keloid scars. Shifting the focus here, so what about stem cell therapy? Stem cells are fascinating. Uh, I don't know how much you know about stem cells. There are basically undifferentiated cells present in different organ systems with the three key characteristics. The first one is self-renewal, which means they have ability to undergo numerous cycles of asymmetrical cell division to produce either differentiated cells or cells that are very similar to a parent cell. Then the second characteristic is differentiation its ability to develop into cells of the tissue in which stem cell is located. But listen this, they also have plasticity, or what's called transdifferentiation, which is ability of adult stem cell to differentiate into cells of tissue different from the original tissue. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So for example, in skin, the stem cells from epidermis, hair follicle, uh, and sebaceous glands multiply and differentiate independently until there is trouble. For example, during injury, any stem cell from one location can give rise to the whole cell lineage. 
If we focus on dermatologic indications that have been of interest, either preclinically or also clinically, so far we had systemic sclerosis, systemic lupus erythematosus, pemphigus, psoriasis, vitiligo, Again, wound healing, you see, there is one, more than one way to approach uh, wound healing than uh, scleromyx edema, hair loss, uh, melanoma, as well as uh, aesthetic medicine. The uh, stem cell-based therapies may develop into a tool for treating both degenerative and inflammatory diseases. However, caution with the stem cell-based therapy is very much needed. The stem cell propensity towards self-renewal and differentiation is highly influenced by their local environment, making it very difficult to foresee how a population may behave in human body. Even changing oxygen levels of the um, stem cell niche can influence uh, their proliferation rate, pluripotency, and finally phenotype. So isolation and characterization of uh, stem cells is crucial, and uh, even the isolated stem cells may have low survival rates. On top of that, culturing of stem cells without contamination requires highly sophisticated laboratory procedures. Then if we want to add to complexity, we start thinking about monitoring. So it has to be very careful. Um, and it's at the core of really uh, stem cell therapy because uh, stem cells can lose genetic stability over time and be prone to actually tumor formation. Then stem cells-based therapies require a regular follow-up to monitor a regenerated tissue over a period uh, of complete recovery for a, a certain patient. Uh, the timeliness and streamlining of uh, cell processing and manufacturing are yet to be perfected. Future research regarding ideal patient selection, timing of intervention, appropriate conditioning regimens, post-intervention care, and ultimately cost effectiveness would help to optimize the results of stem cell therapy. So on to our final point of the discussion, Dr. Yankicevic, you spoke on the challenges of stem cell therapies development. But what about challenges in gene therapy investigations? A very complex question. Um, I think the challenges in gene therapy clinical research really start with decision making and even informed consent because there could be problems with understanding the nature of the intervention and risks for participants when uh, participants may be highly interested if they have a debilitating or life-threatening disease, they can overestimate the benefits and underestimate uh, the potential safety issues. It is really important to provide detailed information to patients to prevent those unrealistic hopes or perception of safety. Another thing to consider is that gene therapy could be irreversible. So the right to revoke one's consent is not applicable here compared to continuing medical treatments. Probabilities and outcomes for adverse events related to gene transfer are difficult to define and completely predict. Gene therapy raises concerns about long-term safety and efficacy and about serious or irreversible side effects. Principal risks include technical issues in terms of the quality and stability of transgene expression, transfer of an unwanted gene, administration of a replication competent virus or a bacterial contamination of vector preparation, then there could be immune response, unintentional modification of germinal cells, just to name a few. Both the viral and non-viral vectors, in my opinion, still have efficacy and safety challenges. Then you have a regulatory perspective. Gene therapy will most likely continue to be strictly regulated, so clinical trials may suffer from increased bureaucracy and cost with decreased speed and adoption. However, because of the comparative ease of gene transfer, the dermatological disorders could be one of favorite targets of gene therapy. What will need to happen are significant investments, 
close collaboration with regulatory agencies to seek endorsement for smart clinical development programs that will fully cover current safety concerns and efficacy shortcomings with market access environment in mind from the start so all patients that need these therapies can receive them once approved. Exactly. Thank you so much. This brings an end to our interview today, Dr. Yankicevich. Thank you so much for taking part in this project. It was uh, an absolute pleasure talking uh, with you, Valerie. This is uh, definitely a field of huge promise, and uh, we're all excited to see what future will bring. As we conclude another illuminating episode of Face Forward, we find ourselves at the crossroads of science and progress. Remember that behind the jargon and statistics lie stories of unwavering commitment, meticulous observation, and the pursuit of evidence that shapes our understanding of health and disease. Stay at the forefront of knowledge and innovation and follow Face Forward on your preferred platform. My name is Valerie Kovny. Thank you for joining us. Until next time. <laughs>